keys to producing bible faith let me give you a few keys right now someone is about to fire unbelief out of your life once and for all that you will begin to produce extraordinary results results that will surprise you that those who knew you january will turn and say what happened to you from last week to this week what shifted and you tell them my faith from little faith is moved to exceeding great faith keys to producing Bible faith. Write it down, please. Mm. <laughs> no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't kick down. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will keep down. Now please sit down. Listen. I tell you sincerely. I, I may not claim to understand everything i'm a student also even in the school of faith but believe me when i tell you i know what i'm talking about the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life this is what we teach if you pay attention to what i'm about to share with you you will manifest bible faith and command the supernatural in a way that you will be surprised the mountain you are seeing is only relative to the size of your faith listen a little ant hill with respect to the ant it is a skyscraper but with respect to man it is something you just walk over your faith can add your height in the spirit you become a giant in the spirit and now join the heroes of faith who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions are you ready please sit down very quickly key number one what does it take to produce bible faith that commands the supernatural number one light the first key that controls bible faith is light the power of knowledge put light slash knowledge light knowledge knowledge of what the promises of god knowledge of what the principles of the kingdom light you dominate with respect to the kind of spiritual illumination that you have please listen to me listen very carefully you will never rise beyond the level of light and illumination that you have psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course our fathers have cried over the issue of light high level spiritual illumination the opening of a man's eyes to know the ways of god i've taught you here every koinonia service is a feast of light god opening our eyes it takes light to turn night to day it does not just take time it takes light you can be in a dark stadium and then on all the lights and the lights can come with a coordinated effort and turn that night in that stadium to look like day that people can play a football match in the night and yet when you are viewing you think it is day because of the level of light that is there everybody say light most believers 
are ignorant of the promises of God most believers are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom it is the reason why many people cannot manifest Bible faith question what do you know that God has said concerning your finances what do you know that God has said concerning your excelling in life what do you know that God has said concerning victory over demons over principalities and powers your faith must be based on what God said question do you know what he has said and do you know all he has said because he did not just say one thing alone I have taught you here when Satan came to Jesus the reply of Jesus was it is written it is written man shall not live by bread it is written it is written it is written even when he was manifesting his purpose and destiny lo I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will there are things that have been written concerning you do you know them can I tell you this it was not Apostle Paul that wrote them it was not Peter that wrote them it was not the minor and the major prophets that wrote them holy men wrote as they were inspired it was the Holy Ghost speaking through the mouth and the hands of men I know what he has said that I shall be the head and not the tail I believe it that I will be above and not beneath I believe it listen make up your mind to be childlike when it comes to the issue of faith there is no big manism with faith many times the things of faith look very elementary so many people in, a, in an attempt to show maturity they ignore these things to their peril it is this childlike approach that has produced giants of faith when you listen to fathers like Papa Copeland teaching on faith sometimes is so elementary it looks like they're just it's like it's like a kindergarten kind of thing yet you look at the results they have defended their understanding of faith for decades and they are still doing it are we learning everybody say light this year you must make up your mind make up your mind that your eyes and your ears will remain gates that will be flooded with light so that your destiny will be able to command results when you know little you cannot do much with little this is a kingdom that is knowledge dependent this is the kingdom that is knowledge dependent dear people of god go and find out let me tell you this there is a kind of knowledge that you need how to know what you don't know you have to learn how to know what you do not know how to find out what you do not know don't wait for knowledge to come and meet you search for it my finances is not working and you can take a day or two listen to me in prayer and fasting maybe you're a man of God and ministry is struggling financially deal with it so that it does not distract you in the future you don't want to have to manipulate people because of financial pressures open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law lord i want to walk in integrity as a minister open my eyes to sort this area once and for all and light from heaven you will see something you have been looking at but was not seen and when you stand on the strength of that light he said right prosperously because of truth when you find truth they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh i look at my life today and with all humility i thank god for the time and the attention i gave to certain things i am grateful to jesus for granting me that attentiveness ministry today would have been a disaster if these keys were not found let me charge you therefore some of you may need to minimize running around and sit down it is time to feast on light light with proof are we together 
you're a man of god and it looks like the supernatural manifestation of the hand of god is not seen in your life no miracles no signs and wonders you can stay with the word i remember a time in my life i had my my phone had there's there's this um audio all the words of jesus only the words of jesus the words of jesus alone not any other word everything jesus said in the bible they compressed it in an mp3 i would listen to it and sleep and wake up and listen to it and sleep and wake up and listen i want to hear what jesus is saying he must talk to me everything in the gospels down to revelation it will repeat i will put it on auto repeat and I'm, i don't know if it's a, 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 a an advice medically i'm just telling you what i did i slept and woke up and slept and woke up and slept and woke up until my spirit knew that something was happening there you must invest in knowledge you must invest in knowledge please go and buy books don't wait for knowledge to come and meet you go to koinonia global there are all kinds of teachings listen to them don't assume don't assume that you know and don't listen once i submit to you i'm standing and i'm speaking to the whole world i would not stand here and tell lies there are there are materials audio materials that i have listened to single-handedly i know you may think it's exaggeration but i've listened to them nothing less than five to eight thousand times one message i put it on auto repeat like that and it keeps counting the goal is not just to be aware of what is being said the goal is to transport it into my spirit the alternative to this pathway is to go and look for power somewhere and it backfires back on you but if this is how you want to take god's way god is not a magician he's a miracle worker this is the labor dimension of faith that most people do not want these scriptures that i'm quoting is not just coming from heaven thank god for his grace but there was something in my mind for the holy ghost to work with yes is god speaking to me but he's using my brain and my mind too to speak are we together there are believers today tell me one scripture you know concerning your protection nothing tell me one scripture you know concerning your victory nothing tell me one scripture you know that tells you your home is secured nothing tell me one scripture you know nothing i just know god is faithful we know general statements like that god is faithful he can't fail me i know tell me one scripture you know that guarantees that ministry will not fail for you tell me one scripture you know that guarantees that god will use you greatly as i'm saying it now just do the rehearsal in your mind many of you will find out that in truth there is almost nothing no i found your word and i did eat it it was a joy and i rejoice into my soul is god challenging us go and get bible on tape go and get bible on um, mp3 get all kinds of things listen to it Put a flash behind your television that has scripture playing listen to it instead of listening to something that is luciferian and is destroying your life the remaining small faiths that you had died as soon as you listen to it i'm not saying don't disconnect with your world no but invest in your spirit you are going far and can i tell you the days that we live in it is men who have faith that will survive these days believe me you cannot use another man's faith the same way you cannot use another man's light to drive he can help you temporarily but you will need your own headlamp to drive two what is the second key to producing bible faith meditation meditation first timothy chapter 4 please from verse 15 to 16 let's hurry up so we can pray first timothy 4 15 read with me please koinonia is projected ready one to read meditate upon these things uh-huh give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all meditate on these things 
meditate on these things do you know what it means to meditate to meditate means to ponder until understanding is established to meditate does not just mean to look uh -uh. the goal of meditation is to produce understanding knowledge gives you awareness meditation gives you understanding or comprehension now you understand the working knowledge of that principle behind what you have read most believers don't meditate unfortunately did you know that most of the world religions encourage meditation even though they have the way they do it but people sit down and meditate until their bodies they are what they call it now their spirits leave their bodies believers don't meditate how in the world are you going to study a scripture when you are running to go and get some food in the kitchen and you're just your bible is on your hand and you quickly come back and you just say i finished it at least i finished one chapter now you look for one three verse or four verse chapter in psalms and just read it and just breeze it over and contained in it is the power to set you free let me tell you the power of meditation all the disciples came to check for the resurrected jesus and they did not see him in a hurry they ran back yet he was there but a woman came and she looked at the tomb it was empty and she refused to go she stood at the garden there and she kept looking she kept looking looking at the tomb all of a sudden she saw two angels and he said this jesus began to talk to her it took staying there to see the disciples came and they just looked and ran back but the woman stayed there stayed there until she saw meditation means to stay till you see god i've listened to many messages about finances i've listened to many messages about spiritual power about the gifts of the spirit but there has to be something i do not understand open my eyes now the spirit of god can refer you to a message that you will listen to that will buttress on that point at the end of it you say this is it by the next time you go for a meeting it will be as if you put a charm in your pocket there will be such manifestation of the power of god because you have found it someone prophesy i will find it in the name of jesus the mystery that connects your today and your tomorrow you will find it in meditation as you are meditating give the holy spirit a chance to show you things that can change your life give the holy spirit a chance to show you things that can turn your life around i listen to my own teachings myself i don't say i'm the one who preached it i listen to it. this message now i'm going back to listen to it no matter how tired i discipline myself to listen because in it i will hear something that came from him through me most believers are lazy meditation is a labor dimension of faith you will take out time and sit down and think the psalmist will usually say sila sila means stop and ponder and think i've taught you here that there are times you can listen to a message of one hour for six hours because you are stopping after five minutes what did he just say and you have to look for another scripture and look at it and repeat again until your spirit hears something i pray for someone as you begin to meditate may you hear what others did not hear may you see what others did not see in the name of jesus christ are we together number three are you ready now the third step to manifesting bible faith is the power of prayer prayer mark eleven twenty four. you cannot divorce bible faith with prayer mark eleven twenty four. therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if you pray when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them prayer you've studied the word you've understood it and many times you see prayer is like salt you are never you don't you don't really pray too early or too late any part of the faith equation you can water it down just like salt 
if you cook with a salty water the food will not go bad just because it's a salty water if you forget to add salt at the end of the cooking you can still put the salt prayer is like that so from the beginning of your study you can start praying even while meditating you can start praying and then you can allocate a proper time for prayer let me tell you how to pray this kind of prayer you see when you are praying the kind of prayer that produces faith you have to pray in line with the area or the issue where you are trusting god to see results in are we together yes aside from praying in tongues you can now pray in the name of jesus i decree and declare this grace for favor is coming upon me i'm studying favor i know that i need it i found out the necessity for favor in my life i've studied it i've studied materials and you are praying your mind is on the idea of prayer while favor while you are praying believers don't pray or we pray amiss you can pray i spent one month it was even in february i remember i don't know what year and i can't remember i wrote it down i spent one month studying on favor because i found out that ministry is hard without favor if the favor of god is not on you you would do ministry as if god did not call you you will suffer financially you will suffer emotionally nothing will happen in your life and you may think it is not an issue except that you wouldn't know when you begin to compromise in ways that will surprise you because of financial pressure so i knew that if i did not get the favor of god it would be risky i studied i studied read materials every scripture that talks about favor in the bible as far as we know i read it and meditated upon it studied the lives of specific people according to the scripture that says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise studied the lives of people who i saw the favor of god walking the day that grace landed i knew it had arrived i welcomed it it was a triumphant entry into my life and i shut the gate you are not going out again now that you are in here and when it comes he speaks he speaks you think you just like me just like that no <laughs> i just felt embarrassed over what i said but it's true <laughs> you don't just like people like that my dear people there is a grace so if everybody hates you in your office before they sack you go and get teachings on favor remember what i taught you about territorial dominion evil will continue when you leave it when you see signs of hatred it's already that favor is not there don't sit down and be hoping that they will sack which one is easier to lend favor or pray that the manager will be sacked let the principles of favor and stay there what if the the person who hates you is the owner of the company when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him please don't downplay what you are learning today the favor of god upon your life all of a sudden you come to a place and you you see that god himself begins to open doors for you your life becomes an expression of the mercy and the grace of god and people will come to meet you and say how come this is happening you will tell them it's the grace of god but you will explain to them too that i can show you there is a way there is a way the favor of god can come upon a man many of us here i need of that grace for favor it is clear everybody say prayer so we're exploring the keys to bible faith number one knowledge light number two meditation number three prayer please invest time praying you're not going to have strong faith without a rich and a robust prayer life but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost
take out time to pray use your nights if god grants you that grace most people are busy in the day except if you dedicate the day for a retreat use your night and pray while you are praying every unbelief is giving way and now you can trust god number four are you ready the fourth key to releasing bible faith is word-based confession word-based confessions psalm 107 and verse 2 let's hurry up please psalm 107 and verse 2 let the redeemed of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so the first instruction is say the second instruction is don't say what you want say what he said say so means repeat as you have heard homologio confess repeat as you have heard let the redeemed of the lord say i am redeemed let the blessed of the lord say i am blessed let the lifted of the lord say i am lifted so you don't just talk your words become a bible-based confession if it is in line with what god has said i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath exalted by the spirit of god according to deuteronomy 28 1 and 2 are we together now you have to believe this by the power of the spirit that in the name of jesus no divination and enchantment i don't know about you but about me no divination surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of the lord they will scatter as soon as they gather you are in ministry you better know this because i tell you sincerely it is only god when we get to heaven that you will see the amount of divinations and enchantments daily over your life i say it humorously that it's only when we get to heaven that we'll know what part of the food we ate that was designed to kill us and that's the one you you probably enjoyed may no evil come near your dwelling in one minute while you are seated i want you to open your mouth and begin to declare everything you know the word says about you don't think this is a childish act in the spirit speak i am the head and in the name of jesus i'm not the tail above and not beneath gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising in the name of jesus christ i grow in wisdom i grow in stature I grow in favor with God and with man. I spend my life serving the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the fullness of my days I fulfill. A thousand shall fall by my side. Someone speak. Ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. Pray. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh great, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus Christ, immune from the scorching thumbs of men, I go from glory to glory, grace to grace. In the name of Jesus, I am like a well-watered garden, planted in the house of God. Therefore, I flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, I am fat and flourishing. Someone prophesy. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Speak over your body. I walk in health in the name of Jesus Christ. Longevity is my portion. hallelujah can i tell you this listen listen please listen one of the assignments of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence 
where you no longer can speak the only thing that comes out of your mouth is <sighs> nigeria that's not a word-based confession when you wake up in the morning while you are stretching that should be your speaking this is the day that the lord has made when you are leaving your house in the morning you get up with joy my going out is blessed my coming in is blessed i am blessed in the city when you're about to travel it to your village you confess that i am also blessed in the country in the name of jesus christ that no enchantment and no divination against me listen you don't need to live in fear when you can speak you hear a negative report don't insult whoever is speaking because people are at different spiritual levels someone looks at you and says look it looks like um this your body everything is all right you can thank them and go back and shut the door behind you a body has thou prepared for me in the name of the lord jesus i decree and declare my organs are functioning properly i prophesy by the power of the holy ghost as my days are so is my strength renewed you have to believe this thing i'm telling you you're a man of god speak over the work that he has given you don't wait for someone to prophesy over you in the name of jesus koinonia you are blessed you are going from glory to glory serving the purposes of the kingdom with love and integrity serving god sincerely souls are coming to be saved jesus spent his life speaking the word of god himself spoke let me tell you many of us what we call speaking is lamentation if it is not the word of god you are not doing bible-based confession speaking your problem to god yes to yourself is not helping anything you speak the word of god call your children can i tell you parents let me charge you as your children get up before they go to school lay hands on them give them confessions to make i'm blessed highly favored anointed serving jesus that's right and you give them a big hug forward march to school so that before they hear rubbish there there is already a covering of scripture don't let other people speak into the life of your children and you are silent part of the assignment of priesthood is speaking speak over your home walk around from the kitchen to the bathrooms and you are declaring in the name of jesus the hand of the lord is upon this house everyone who steps his feet in this house is blessed i decree and declare carry the photo of your loved ones lay hands on it carry the photo of your family members lay your hands on it decree and declare declare ye that thou mightest be justified confession are you learning now bible faith is released at the instance of confession i made up my mind to love jesus so much but to love my destiny too so much you will never coerce me into speaking negatively about my destiny i could laugh over things when i hear people say it but even my spirit knows what i take seriously i have no business saying anything over my life and my destiny that i do not intend for it to happen are we together parents let's manage anger and trust god for victory over it because many of us have produced children that look like they are cursed and that cause came from us when you call a child stupid boy you call a child arm robber you call a child whatever prostitute you call a child whatever name by the time they get to teenage that prophecy has built many of us that's what has been hovering around your head negative things dull head how are you and they force you to say sir and you are agreeing and before you know it you find out that nothing works for you but let me speak over your life if there is anybody who has spoken over your life whether in ignorance and they have said things over you that is hanging over your life i stand tonight by the privilege of priesthood and i declare every negative speaking over you that has been programmed to your destiny let it leave your destiny now in the name of jesus please sit down 
we're almost done number five the third step to releasing bible faith is actions of obedience please underline that one this is a major requirement if it is to be called bible faith in addition to knowledge in addition to meditation that produces understanding in addition to prayer addition to confession your faith should not just stop with confession this is the major challenge of pentecostals and charismatics we have defined the entire scope of acting upon the word to just speech it does not end in speaking there is a doing actions of obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 just write it for reference it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do take note to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above the nations of the earth too and this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god there is the doing of faith joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth then he says but thou shalt meditate there in day and night you see your mouth you see meditation now he says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success john 13 and verse 17 final scripture for that point john 13 and verse 17 if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them the doing part is where many believers miss it out on the on the the equation of faith most believers do not do haven't heard received instructions we do not do the holy ghost speaks to you you do not do scripture speak to you there is no doing and every time there is no doing you do not commit god to perform bishop oedeko says faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said the the demands that commit his integrity to perform for instance you want to prosper you are finding out the secret of kingdom prosperity now you've learned god has spoken about giving and all of that it does not just stop in giving alone there is a place of diligence and value and productivity now you are a giver you've given tithe you've given offerings but you are not productive you are going to be poor believe me at best you will struggle you will just have one time breakthroughs that come but you cannot perpetuate wealth that way a diligent hand shall be made fat are we together yeah you are a man of god and you desire excellence in ministry there is an engracing of god that comes upon you to anoint you but it says study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth that means there is a place for study and if you do not stay with material stay with the holy ghost to study shame will be imminent most believers do not satisfy the conditions that are connected to the promises they desire to see happen in their lives can i tell you this every promise of god to you has a condition connected to it find out the condition and obey find out the condition and obey for instance the bible is clear as to those who serve idols that you cannot serve idols and serve the living god you cannot mix fresh water and and salty water together there are people who serve idols and then they they come to church and expect things to work well for them i've shared with you the scripture woe to those who go down to egypt those who pass through fire and do all kinds of necromancy and divination if it is not jesus christ only then it is not him at all are we together 
i'll tell you the reason why many people live defeated lives even in the area of finances sincerely speaking and i'm, I'm not this this is an opinion in my opinion i believe that most people are lazy and then those who work are not productive Pro being productive is not activity it is intelligence intelligence on your level is what brings productivity many people are just shadow boxing and hustling laboring from morning till night they are not circumspect the bible says to be circumspect to work as wise and not as unwise conserve your energy and coordinate it intelligently are we together yeah. actions of obedience there is a direct connection between relationships and victory and excellence the bible teaches that so after you have studied the principles then you now begin to learn the principles of relationships so that by it god will connect you to strategic destiny helpers like the law of honor like the law of value you understand these principles you are now ready to rise You are only having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your own obedience is complete believers listen to me please you must be ready to act on the word you must be ready to take steps of obedience please underline that because for many of us this is where we are found wanting we know what god said should be but we have not taken out time to study the demands the demands for an excelling life the demands for an anointed life it does not just come by luck actions of obedience number six am i right on that the sixth key to producing bible faith is thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 thanksgiving do not downplay this principle it is powerful thanksgiving be anxious for nothing the word careful there i'm repeating this because i want you to learn my my intent is for you to get knowledge be careful or anxious really for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god someone shout thank you jesus thank you. one more time say thank you jesus thank you. can i tell you this thanksgiving is proof of faith knowing that the god you are praying to is a god of integrity and the god of ability you can thank him even in advance lord i thank you because i know you always hear me jesus prayed jesus prayed father i thank you at the tomb of lazarus will thanksgiving be the right thing to do at the tomb of a man who had died three days father i thank you because you always hear me when jesus was about to distribute bread to multiply bread the bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks thanksgiving is a mystery that multiplies everything you thank god for cannot remain at the level that it was as at the time you were thanking him please look up to me let me teach you a powerful principle resist the temptation that comes to make you complain about what you think God has not done for many of us we need to go back and say Lord thank you I may not be in my own house but thank you that I have rent to pay without stress my children may not be doing well in school but thank you that I have children male and female Nigerians we have to be careful I know that things may be challenging as a nation which is not unusual with the nations of the earth especially at this time but let me tell you sincerely you must learn to say thank you someone again say thank you Jesus you will hardly have the opportunity to complain when you're wrapped up in Thanksgiving you get up in the morning Lord Jesus thank you this is a beautiful day that you have made I am grateful thank you because you love me I can rest in your love thank you because I can trust you thank you because this is a great day thanksgiving is powerful there is there is there is an energy that comes from thanksgiving that edifies even you the one giving thanks you don't want to be around a naggy negative person 
tomorrow is valentine again thanksgiving maybe i should just say a word or two don't depress yourself by saying my husband I've, I've been watching him he has not gone out to buy anything my wife my this and that please for god's sake give your destiny a chance to be happy and tomorrow is an opportunity to defend your wisdom are we together you get up in the morning lord it is only the living that can praise you i am grateful thank you it is i have only gary in the kitchen but lord i say thank you in as much as i know and i expect a lot more than this but i am saying thank you somebody again say thank you jesus apostle you don't know there's not so much in my bank account still say thank you jesus hallelujah i was told that there was someone who was angry with life and he was going to go and hang himself and he warned his wife and all the people around him he said if you see me going to hang myself don't even try to come near me to say sorry just allow me do what i want to do and as he was on his way to go and hang himself grumbling and saying this life is not fair and all of that he saw someone who was watching him and he said why are you looking at me and he says please can you since you are going to die can you remove the clothes that you have and help me with it because it doesn't once you hang there's no issue of nakedness can you help me with these clothes on your way to go and die and the person said really and it occurred to him that he had taken the clothes that he had even for granted and he was going to go and hang himself and here was someone praying saying since you are going to go and die please help me with your clothes can i tell you this your current level no matter what level you are is somebody's prayer point let me repeat it your current level spiritually economically etc is somebody's prayer point do not take your eyes away from what god has done and then you look at the things he has not done and you begin to nag and complain and get angry one more time say thank you jesus i know that i want to stretch to begin to pray for five six hours but the fact that i have a consistent prayer life even if it's 10 10 minutes thank you jesus thank you the fact that i can love you and somebody can give me money to bribe me and i can say no thank you jesus believers we need to live thankful lives one of the ways to walk by faith is to see what god is doing all the time and say thank you lord we're in this self-contained is it that we can grow is it that this family thank you jesus it's not a license to remain in mediocrity but let me tell you thanksgiving is powerful when you thank him multiplication will always come thank him for the little you have thank him for the job that you have don't complain every time you see people applying for that same job that you want to leave yes you can leave but thank him for it don't live in anger and you are frowning around i don't know what kind of man i married self this man is as if he doesn't hear the message he's always looking at the preacher and nothing is entering his head why don't you go back and say lord thank you at least i have a husband and at least even though the man acts the way he's acting thank god that he submits to the authority of jesus you think that's a little issue the head over you you want to know who he submits to if it is not jesus you are in trouble lift your eyes and say thank you when you go back home say thank you some of you will need to roll on the ground and say thank you jesus you kept me alive this is february don't wait until it is december before you carry some falls rolling on the ground you can thank him every day and you can thank him every time the last key and then we'll wrap up the last key that activates bible believing faith is patience patience hebrews 6 12 patience hmm. 
that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises faith with patience most people are not patient on god can i tell you the truth there are times that god would seem to come for you immediately but there are times that god will connect his manifestation with the law of process and you will need time is god speaking to someone now because we live in a world of hurry sharp sharp if it does not happen immediately it is not god we want instant growth instant anointing instant maturity instant everything there are times that no matter how spiritual you are you will need to subscribe to the law of time and the reason why god allows time sometimes is because you are not yet matured and ready to receive that blessing so while it is in process coming he's training you and building your mind there are people today who if you check their prayer requests here what they wrote instead of them to write something gradually they can write something like 11 billion or 20 billion and the per and the person who is writing that kind of thing he has never held even one million of his own money i can tell you god is a god of speed but he's not a foolish god 11 billion for some people may be like recharge card but for some people that is what will send you to hell and god loves you too much his son died for your sins he's not going to just play with your salvation <laughs> Eleven billion is a lot of money, no matter how much money you have. Are we together? Eleven billions can eleven billion can do many things. It can kill, including you, the holder of the money. There are many things you have no business thinking about that it will force you to think about. There are many places you have no business going. That's what I mean by can kill. Everybody say patience. patience. One more time, say patience. patience. Listen to me. This is where the devil cheats many of us. I've said this for many years. If God wants to give you, just to use an example, if God wants to give you one million next week, satan will give you two hundred thousand now five five naira so that it will look plenty because you are in darkness you will not know it's five naira <laughs> you think you have so much money until you come to the light and you find out that you've been piling five five naira can i tell you every time you cannot wait for isaac you will give birth to ishmael every time you cannot wait for isaac you will give birth to what will fight isaac when he comes <laughs> it's true impatience has cheated many believers many believers two weeks to your breakthrough but you couldn't wait and you said you know what i'm resigning that job as soon as you just resigned they just told you that all the people in your level the company just had a breakthrough and they distributed all of them to go and be director somewhere you ran back and they say don't near this company again just go don't near this place again i have learned the power of patience even in ministry you must be very patient with god as he makes you you must be patient with God as he builds you. Listen carefully, I'm wrapping up now. There are many of us right now, the one problem you have is impatience. You do not have the patience to allow the word of God manifest in your life. That obsession for everything to happen now, it may not be like that. It is impatience that is driving many, many young people in this country to get into practices what does money ritual seek to achieve it's impatience the person wants to become a billionaire overnight 
impatience impatience has pushed people to join gangs clubs demonic satanic organizations covenants that will plague their children and their children's children because of impatience listen to me we live in a world where when people see you and they say oh i was your classmate i was your this till now you don't have a car till now you don't have this and that usually you will feel indicted and you feel that pressure there is power in patience because you give god a chance to prepare a table before you and with honor bring you into seasons that will last are we together impatience is dangerous it has destroyed people it has destroyed ministries it has destroyed businesses it has destroyed relationships it has destroyed marriages it has destroyed families impatience you need to give god a chance for his word to work in your life i made up my mind that i will continue to press for the best of god but can i tell you every level where god has not brought me in i have no business going there whatever god has given me if god gives me a cup with tea and bread i will take it with honor while i wait for the day turkey will arrive you can force yourself to catch turkey somewhere and suffer because you don't have the backing of god you understand what i'm trying to say don't be under pressure to eat tomorrow today don't be under pressure to wear tomorrow today nigerians let's be careful africans let's be careful there are people who borrow everything borrow clothes borrow whatever the only thing you are permitted to borrow is vessels borrow vessels borrow not a few help that person please are we together get out of a fake life and be patient anybody who laughs at you if you can stay in one bedroom now stay there with honor and be saving the money that god is helping you with don't get faith is not foolishness the pressure to show that the world is working is what has driven a lot of people into trouble and beware of associations that force you to step into a tomorrow that god has not brought you there you have friends and they tell you they are going to an expensive restaurant some of them may have wealthy parents and they are going to spend five five hundred thousand that night five hundred thousand is all you have home and abroad don't make that mistake of carrying your destiny and making the mistake of esau are we together it's one of the prayers that i prayed for myself that god should never allow me succumb to the pressure of moving before my time and entering seasons that were not ordained of him it is powerful when god opens the door for you with honor and with nobility you will enter a door but you can force yourself and die at the door there there are people today who are in debt because they got into things that their faith level had not reached to prove a point if your child you cannot pay 3.5 million naira for the child look for a school that is within your range every range has a school fees that i mean there are people there who are giving their best are we together i say it respectfully especially for those of us who live in the fct here we have to be careful when i came into this city i found a spirit that makes people to do things that they have not yet gotten to there is a pressure to show that you are succeeding people will borrow a car borrow anything at all why fake what can be real be patient are we together you practice this that i've taught you tonight believe me ladies and gentlemen you will find your faith working and you will see yourself walking in the supernatural in a way that will bless you these are not my opinions these are truths that i live by our fathers of faith have shown us this pathway it pays to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise for someone god is speaking to you right now kill impatience in your life 
is going to drive you into debt it will drive you into hypertension avoid unhealthy comparison avoid unhealthy comparison this one has this that one has that what of mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you can be inspired but reject associations that put pressure on you anybody who cannot appreciate you the way they are the way you are it then means that you should not even be in those circles are we together there are many of us who are doing well respectfully speaking even as parents until we join certain groups that started putting pressure on our finances you were doing well and your wife is cooperating with you she knows that you don't earn so much and she's willing to be patient but we started joining all kinds of groups and associations that destroy our potential for growth it's always said to cut your coat according to your size it is true i know what i can do in ministry at this level i know what i cannot do in ministry at this level i'm not ashamed of it i'm not i'm not embarrassed with growth i will grow patiently to what god intends for me to be i will never give myself sleepless night because of any of no 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 is someone speaking to us now yes reject the pressure that comes with this world that we live in today you mean at this level you are not in your own house maybe that can challenge you it can inspire you that's fine but the moment it intimidates you and you say no between now and april i must buy a house i don't care how the money comes satan will say what did you say you are inviting me and of course he will come let me challenge you not everything is receivable from people have the maturity to vet people before you receive things from them i'm not this is this is the house of the lord so you learn this before we pray even as a man of god there are people who have brought gifts for me and sometimes i look at what they want to give me and i look at the person i'm not belittling them but i understand the law of process where did this come from your mindset defends your results and there are things that when you want to do and you don't have a mental construct that defends it there is problem There are people who have wanted to give me certain gifts and i just blessed them and laugh over it and prayed on it and gave them back someone just comes and is looking like an arm robber and looks at you and says here is the paper of an estate and because your hand is always collecting everything you collect something and by the next day they say don't talk just follow us you say what <laughs> just follow us and you see newspaper will not say they gave you a gift exposed you know journalists <laughs> patience can save you a lot of things there are people they come to you and they say look there is something you can make money in two weeks you should be afraid already are we together you come and drop prayer requests here you see me kneeling down sweating and praying and you don't pay attention to that prayer you stand up and go somewhere and the moment someone tells you come let's go somewhere you are all look the bible gives us wisdom run away you get to a point of no return and start fraternizing with demon spirits dip your hand in blood eat human flesh go through dehumanizing things preachers listen our lives and even ministries in level don't rush your season if god gives you 20 members teach them with honor teach them with your whole heart 